Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on Edward III and just for something a little different we get to hear from King Edward III today in Act 2, Scene 2. So if you remember King Edward III wants to be with the Countess of Salisbury but she said that she would rather die than be with him because they're both married and she doesn't want to break that oath to God. It's not that she has anything against the king it's that she doesn't want to break that oath to God and she even told her father Warwick that at the end of Act 2, Scene 1 and he was like thank goodness I hope you would say that. But in Act 2, Scene 2, we now have Edward and the Countess of Salisbury back together having a conversation about this because he was like, so are you ready to succumb to my whims? He didn't quite say it like that, but that was the basic meaning of it. And she was like, well, I will do whatever you want as long as you get rid of any impediments to our being together. And he's like, what do you mean impediments? And she's like, well, you have a wife and I have a husband, wink, wink. And he's like, oh yeah, no problem. I can kill them. And in yesterday's monologue, she pulled out two knives and said, take this one to go kill your queen, and with this one we'll, ki we'll kill my husband who lives in my heart, which could be taken to suggest that she would rather kill herself <laughs> or she's proposing killing herself in this whole scenario. And she put the choice to the king at the very end of the monologue saying, this is it, either you give up your suit or we do this whole murder plan that might end up with me also dead. And King Edward responds, even by that power, I swear that gives me now the power to be ashamed of myself. I never mean to part my lips again in any words that tends to such a suit. Arise, true English lady, whom our isle may better boast of than ever Roman might of her whose ransacked treasury hath tasked the vain endeavor of so many pens. Arise, and be my fault, thy honor's fame, which after ages shall enrich thee with. I am awaked from this idle dream. Warwick, my son, Darby, Artois, Audley, brave warriors are all, where are you all this while? Warwick, I make thee warden of the north. Thou, Prince of Wales, and Audley, straight to sea, scour to New Haven. Some there stay for me. Myself, Artois, and Darby will through Flanders to greet our friends there and to crave their aid. This night will scarce suffice me to discover my folly's siege against a faithful lover. For ere the sun shall guide the eastern sky, we'll wake him with our martial harmony. And that's the end of the scene. So what he's saying at the beginning of this, he's acquiescing to her because he doesn't want to kill her. And he very much took it as the, if we go the whole murder route, then she's gonna end up dead too. So he backs off of that and sort of apologizes for it and then shifts gears to go back to the, hey, let's go invade France thing. So he calls all of his people to him and he makes Warwick the warden of the north and sends others off to, you know, try to muster that whole thing. And he's like, all right, we're going to go. Now it's time to go to war with France. And that's the end of act two. It's the end of act two, scene two, and the end of act two. So come on back tomorrow. It's this play is a little bit weird. It, you know, in Troilus and Cressida, we had the romance story and we had the war story and both kind of went through to the end. In this play, it's sort of like the love. It feels like it ends, put that aside and let's go to war. So back tomorrow and find out what happens with the war and find out also if we ever circle back to this Countess of Salisbury thing again. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Mwah.